It gives me great pleasure to be here with the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce, primarily because the Chamber has been working with the government on the current issue of climate change. And today, you have organized this summit, which is a long felt need for Sri Lanka, for the business community to meet here and to discuss the ways and means of how we combat climate change. Since I took over as president, I have given top priority to climate change. In fact, I established the Climate Change Center in my office and appointed an advisor. Until then, our focus has been on the environment. It doesn't mean that we should take our focus away from the environment, but we must also realize that within it, the important role that climate change plays. If climate change takes place, as some of you fear, then the environment itself will change for the worse. Therefore, how we can adapt to climate change, how we can combat to climate change, are ones that are certainly matters of importance for all of us. I need not say anything else. You know what it has been like the last few days, walking out in, around in the city, and this is just a sign of things to come. My task as president had been to restore the economy, or in other words, to stabilize the economy. That task is nearing an end, and we have to now focus on the next step. We can't carry on with this economic model, which certainly hasn't worked. And we have, as I mentioned many times before, transformed ourselves into an export-oriented economy and a highly competitive economy. This purpose, the government will be introducing legislation in parliament, which will ensure that all government policies focus on the transformation to a highly competitive export-oriented economy. In, in fact, the bill most probably will be gazetted next week. But I, I'm not going to deal at length with the bill except to say that one of the items, the bill, in, the, in carrying out this transformation is to ensure that we achieve net zero by 2050. And I can tell you we will achieve it before that. Sri Lanka can do it. So in making our policies, which is going to affect all of you, not in a transformation of an economy into export orientation, but into an economy that is based on achieving net zero. So that's how we are going to work this out. As it is, for the first step is we are already drafting a new law which will deal with the environment and climate change. In some countries, we have different acts dealing with the laws, but we decided that we will bring it together, one law which will handle both environment and climate change. We we'll retain the Central Environment Authority, but we'll also bring in the Climate Change Center. I've, in the process of drafting, I've asked the officials now, in doing so, let's far as possible follow the Climate Change Act of UK, which I think is a good one. And it puts the burden on the government and the minister to act on the advice of the Climate Change Committee and to table the regulations in Parliament. So that is the legislative aspect that we are bringing in. And the economy, on that basis, we have to have a green economy. So green financing and the whole aspects the commercial and the economic aspects become important. That's where the Chamber of Commerce has an important role to play. We will promote the green economy. We will give priority to promoting a green economy. We might as well be the first in the region to do so. We are small enough to do that. And our development, I hope, all of you will focus on seeing how we can succeed in becoming a green economy. So part of this will also, again, it will depend on how we structure our new financial instruments. One reason for following the Climate Change Act of UK, because that's one that has been accepted well by the financial circles. So we will ensure that our green financing, the different options available, are certainly based on the same practices as UK. The rest is how do we get these instruments together? 
what do we do? Well, that's why I think the Chamber of Commerce, the Stock Exchange, our investment ministry all come together. So that's one area that will have to be developed once we announce the, de the details of our policy on climate change. It will be to, I would want it to cover every sector of the economy now. We might as well start from the beginning. We need not be uh, looking at different sectors and sequencing it. We are small enough that where we are, we can start on all sectors together. But what one that has engaged our attention is the energy sector. I remember when we started the Accelerator Mahavali scheme, as a member of the cabinet at that time, is to ensure that we had a majority of hydroelectricity potential. So we built all these reservoirs just within a space of 10 years. But since then, as development came, we had to also bring in the fossil fuels. Now we have brought the fossil fuels, we brought the uh, mini hydros, and what's the next stage? Are we going to stay on with fossil fuel or move out? Now Sri Lanka certainly has potential for renewable energy. If you look at our solar capacity and our capacity for wind power, we are looking at something like in the region of 30 to 50 gigawatts. One of the things that depend on determining the wind power now is the inquiry we are carrying on about how birds will be affected in the Mana district. I have seen the CB plant and I have seen how it operates and it's automatic so it switches off when a bird comes near. But nevertheless, let's, let's exhaust that, it will take a bit of time. But I said, let's, let's get through this and be sure that we avoid any harm to wildlife in the process. But we have this potential. It's not merely on land, not only offshore, but on the high seas. It will start from about Putlam and go all the way to Mulativ. And again, another, as far as wind power is concerned. And then again in Hambantota. That's the wind power. Solar is anywhere. And in addition to land, the Ancient kings left us with reservoirs, which we now find are also becoming useful for floating solar. Interest in solar is just starting. We have a long way to go, but the vision statement I made with Prime Minister Modi included Sri Lanka selling uh, energy to India. So we will have to, we have now disagreed to have the connectivity. We made uh, the first agreement also with Adani Group was just finalized a few days ago. We are also now working on another project near Poonakarin to utilize the Poonakarin reservoir and that includes building uh, the largest battery storage facility in Asia. So we, we are also now working on battery storage. There is much more potential that will come into place. But we want to make the best use of the renewable energy sources that we have. Some people have spoken about the biomass. Most of the reports that I've received so far doesn't indicate that biomass has uh, such a good future in Sri Lanka. Nevertheless, let, let's get our energy worked out. So this is one sector that we are looking at. Based on energy, we can do many changes. If there's green hydrogen, since we are developing the Trincomalee port, we have the Colombo port and we have the Hambantota port, then we become more attractive as a regional logistics center. So this is some part of the thinking that is going on as far as the economy is concerned. The rest of where we start, what we do, is left to the Chamber of Commerce and the other institutions and the smaller chambers outside there. So now it's up for you to make use of the uh, potential that we have in Sri Lanka. In keeping with this, we've also decided to emphasize on teaching of technology. Again, on the vision statement, Prime Minister Modi uh, has been generous enough to give us a campus of the IIT Chennai. So that will come into candy. In addition, the government is asking the universities to ensure that engineering faculties are started in all universities. And next is the emphasis on the teaching of AI. The government itself is starting a, another university in Kurunagala, another one in Sitavaka, affiliated on the same model at the KD University, which will focus on technology. And finally, there's one more university which we are planning 
again on technology. This is important for us. But we need the personnel. We are short of the people. We have a shortage of skilled people. We will also, I think Govinda has been involved in restructuring the total uh, system of uh, vocational training. All this is necessary to go to the next stage of technological development. And as far as the economy is concerned, a new area is agricultural modernization based on agriculture food. So there will be far-reaching changes, including making available about 300,000 new acres for agriculture to take place. So this all fits in agriculture, uh, the green economy. The next uh, issue is we go out of Sri Lanka into the world. The global community has still not been able to come together on an agreement of how we deal with the challenges. From COP meeting to COP meeting, we've gone there, and there's a lot of talk, but unfortunately, there has been no agreement. I don't think we can go on and on meeting like this. In the next two meetings, either we must come to some agreements or give this up. That's what Sri Lanka plans to tell the COP. But on our own, we've taken three initiatives. Firstly, debt restructuring. That debt restructuring must help the African nations. That funding is necessary to make it available for the African nations to pull through. Otherwise, there will be a disaster on the continent. We ourselves went through debt restructuring. We didn't go and ask some money. We did it the hard way. Okay, that, that's all right. As Sri Lanka is a country that can make it. But the rest of them certainly need it. Secondly, funds that we are waiting for, which was promised from Glasgow onwards, and uh, somewhere it's the, either money got lost or it never left the uh, banks where it was stored. But that unfortunately happens to be the story of funding. Now that funding is required. We need that funding. But the money hasn't turned up. While we are watching for this money to come, we see, for instance, in the last few weeks, a fairly large chunk of money being voted by the US Congress to help Ukraine, Taiwan and Israel the EU is also uh, voting money to help Ukraine. That may be in the region now about finally about 100 billion. And I don't know how much Russia is putting to keep its war going, to keep the war going in Ukraine. But certainly all this together must be coming to about 150 to 200 billion. Just imagine what that can do. We went from COP meeting to COP. One, one conference of party to another conference of party to another conference of parties and where we were promised all these monies we are standing watching for it and all of a sudden all the money goes into Ukraine and Gaza and uh, towards Taiwan so remember that this word the developing world has to put up a fight we have to put up a fight in, on one side other side we must do all we can to develop it commercially this is why I have promoted the concept of the tropical belt. After all, the tropical belt is the sink. So let's identify all, every area in the tropical belt, which can be, which is commercially viable as far as uh, climate change is concerned for different projects. Let's do all that first. If the money is not coming to us as aid or for development, okay, take the money in for commercial development of the environmental project. So that's big. I mean, you look at what's available in uh, Africa. Look at what's available in Sri Lanka. Let's, let's do that. Uh, but we will, we'll be pushing it at the next meeting of the conference of parties. And in addition to that, Iora, here we are studying on the potential for the Indian notion. So take the tropical belt plus Indian notion, and there you get the big sink you want. That is what Sri Lanka will be pressing, and that will make a big change. The money is there. We have to get the money. If it's not coming through the traditional development assistance, well, there's commercial potential. Let's exploit it. Why are we waiting? That's what we require. Then Sri Lanka also is promoting, we are bringing the legislation. We've been speaking with some of the countries to establish the International Climate Change University for climate adaptation. We have already selected about 600 acres, the old Skanska camp and the surrounding area in Kotmali. So that's where we'll be working. We've been talking with Korea, we'll be talking with India, with China, with Japan, 
some of the Western countries have uh, shown an interest. So with the legislation, we'll be ready and hope to start that next year. But this is what Sri Lanka is making, the contribution we are making as a country to climate change. I thought I'd mention that here. I don't want to take any more of your time because there will be far more interesting uh, discussion that will take place. So I thank you for inviting me to address this gathering.